Cheers to everybody. Uh, we are the riders to uh, the ride, and we're here to answer some of your questions. And first of all, we would like to say uh, thank you for all your questions, and also we hope that you're all safe where you're at during these difficult times. So stay safe, stay cool. Cześć wszystkim, z tej strony Mieszko z kanału Eurowizja.org i mam ogromną przyjemność powitać Was w kolejnej odsłonie naszego cyklu wywiadów dotyczących Eurowizji 2021. Będzie zagranicznie, ale porozmawiamy o piosence polskiej na Eurowizję 2021, a mianowicie jestem dzisiaj z kompozytorami i producentami utworu The Ride dla Rafała Brzezowskiego. Są ze mną Joachim Owrenius. Thomas Carlson, Clara Rubenson i Johan Mauritson. Mam nadzieję, że poprawnie wymieniłem nazwiska naszych producentów. I cóż, nie przedłużając, łączymy się ze Szwecją. Hello guys, I hope that you are safe during the coronavirus pandemic and of course you stay healthy. How do you feel? Well, um, it's just, um, it's been a long time. Um, right now I'm spending a lot of time in, at my house just being very much in quarantine and uh, it's getting boring but at the same time hey um, it's it, it is what it is and I'm sure you guys are going through the same so soon we will have a, a <laughs> opening up how do you feel uh, I feel good I feel great uh, oh, yeah. James Brown <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, this pandemic has been uh, really tough, uh, but I have continued worked a lot, uh, a lot of online distance uh, corporations, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, since you quoted a song, I will quote another song. Um, it's the end of the world, as we know, as we know it. it, and I feel fine. <laughs> What was the idea to work together? Uh, it all started with uh, we should write a fourth single to Clara Rubenson, and uh, we wanted to have uh, this eighty vibe. And you won here. He he got black belt in eighty. It's got the eighties music for sure. For sure, true. So yeah, that's that's how it kind of like got started. Yeah, good team. Okay, another question to you: Do you like Eurovision? Uh, do you have some memories regarding ESC? Well, to be honest, I, I actually really do like Eurovision. I mean, it's been a part of my life for such a long time, and uh, one of the, the most fun memories uh, that I have from. Um, participating in different countries for the uh, selection is uh, I was part of the Finland one in 2006. And that was the year that uh, Lordi won with the Hard Rock Hallelujah. And the fun thing is that these guys were so, their makeup, you know, the monster thingies and their everything, it was so complicated to, to add on the makeup. So they were in the dressing room for three days, and then I never saw them <laughs> without makeup. So they were sitting there, and he's got food sent to the room, and that was it. And then they just released them to make like uh, uh, the the actual TV, like uh, the rehearsals and the actual broadcast. Uh, so <laughs> I was just like, okay, let's lock in the guys. So and, uh, so you met Lordy. That's the thing I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. But they won, of course. And that was a major bummer, but uh, since they took home the whole shebang, I guess uh, it's okay. What's your memory? Uh, my first memory from the original song contest was when her race won uh, in 1984 with Dilu Lay. I remember those guys in uh, this neon uh, shirts, the golden shoes, and uh, they stood on their hands when they had won the whole competition. So that's my first and uh, coolest memory of your mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember uh, my first memory if we're thinking talking about first memories I think um, the Belgian song Eurovision from 78 or something is my first memory I think so wow. it was it was like yeah and he's a synth legend that guy uh, or those guys uh, Eurovision, that was the name of the song. Also, there was a French song called uh, La La Pop, 
Bangwan or something like that, and they were dancing around as penguins. Those are early memories. Or just manufacturing your mind. <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> I will show you these videos <laughs> oh, yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, of course, I love Eurovision. I've always watched it for as long as I can remember. And, well, I have lots of memories, but not like big ones. Tell us something how the process of recording the right looks like when the song was created. <laughs> we started in the summer, uh, me, TK, Yuan, and Clara. Last summer. La yeah, last summer, 2020. Uh, and uh, the process, we wanted to create a uh, 80s vibe, uh, modern pop song for Clara. And uh, we had uh, four, five sessions. Um, continue writing, producing, all those kind of stuff. That changing. <laughs> yeah, changing. Uh, and uh, the song was done in uh, early October. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. I read a few comments and some people asked about Melody Festival and the Swedish ESC qualifications and that the song was actually meant to be part of that. No, no. it wasn't. No. Because in Sweden you have to submit your songs to Melody Festival in early September. Yeah. Yes. So no, it never was sent to Melody Festival. What were your inspirations to create a song to write? Well, we, we already spoke about like the, the process of like wanting to create something that sounded like 80s. Uh, but as, as far as like lyrics go, um, I think we wanted to... Um, because the song has that kind of like energy and, and positive energy in it. So we wanted to create something that, that, uh, that there is... Uh, you, shall not, you should not create any, any obstacles in your way because there's always room for you to grow if you're going to go for it. Like, if you decide uh, that, okay, I'm going to go to the next level, uh, whatever happens, you can do it. And that was kind of like the ride is, is like the, 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 the um, it's a simile for uh, that you can, um, that it's a crazy ride, but we're, we're all on it. And if you claim it, you can go wherever you want to. So basically, never give up. Believe in yourself, sort of. That's that's actually a lot better. <laughs> like he said, it so much quicker. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so complicated. There was a rumor in Poland that the couple of uh, artists were interested in recording the ride. Could you reveal some names? Uh, no, uh, because uh, first of all, it was written to Clara, and then Rafał came up. I wanted to do a song for Eurovision, and now it's Rafael's song, so no, we have never recorded with anyone, anyone else. Eurovision fan comments that The Right is a cool song, but a little bit steady. Uh, have you ever thought about revamp of The Right or just um, improve something? Well, why do you make to... these sounds? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's like want to have like the Star Wars. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, but it's it's something where it's um, <clears throat> first of all, you, you should remember that this song was not written to be like to be a part of Eurovision. Uh, it was just written as a song, um, and uh, I think that is something that is also true that we've um, that we've seen in the process is that a lot of people when they listen to it two, three, four, or five times. It starts growing on them, mm -hmm. and I think that's something that we really uh, we, uh, we 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 recognize very well. And and, and uh, uh, the revamp, I, I don't know. Um, I think it's something where it's like it's also up to you guys. What do you think? Should we do like a revamp? It, we've been talking about it, but like uh, it's all about the public demand. And uh, Yuki, what do you say? Yeah, of course we can uh, try to do a revamp of the song and. Uh, as Tiki said, we have think, thought about it, um, but we need your help. Johan, you took part in a Polish national selection called Song for Europe 14 years ago. As we know, your band Charisma was OGA Poland hot favorite. Tell us, how do you remember that time and why did you choose Poland? To start off with, how it all happened was that 2006, um, we did a concert in Gdańsk 
with Scooter, you know, the German techno act. And uh, so that had us meet with some really great people in Poland. And that also led to, in 2006, later in the year, um, they asking us for a demo uh, or a song that we could submit to the Polish Eurovision uh, qualifications. Uh, and that was the song Emily. And um, that's how it happened. And so, yeah, I have a lot of memories from uh, doing that. I remember, do you remember that we only rehearsed with a camera for like 30 minutes or something? Yeah, wow. We didn't yeah. do like camera angles and stuff like that. We just like a take. And so you see me running around the stage, catching cameras and so, but it all, it worked really well. Yeah, it did, it did. And so I remember also meeting everyone um, at the OGAE Poland and getting the plaque and, and meeting friends that are still friends today. And actually, that's that's uh, also how my career as a songwriter in Poland started, uh, thanks to this. Uh, I, I met a, a guy there uh, and uh, we started like working together and in 2013, 12 or 13, we, we together released an artist in Poland called Margaret. And we, um, I'd written the song called Thank You Very Much that turned out to be a huge hit that year. And after that, uh, I've written a bunch of stuff for, for Poland and I've been there so many times. And, uh, and I love it. And uh, it's, I've been so welcome there for so many years that it's, uh, yeah, looking forward to going back. Yeah, and uh, also I remember going back to Gdansk in 2008 to do a concert with um, a symphony orchestra. That was really, really cool. Amazing times. Yeah. Fantastic. And um, what else? Oh, yeah. Doing the Cavaci Erbata a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> so early. Finally, two questions to you. Have you already heard another song from the Eurovision 2021? And do you have a favorite one? <laughs> yeah, I heard a, heard a few of the songs uh, competing in Eurovision. And my favorite is uh, Ireland. That's the Roy. And that songwriter is actually from the city too. Yeah. Yes. Ta -da. Emily Eriksson. Well, I haven't heard that many, to be honest with you. I've heard Italy, Switzerland, Sweden, of course, I think, uh, maybe Finland. And, and I, I don't have any, any huge favorites as of yet, but uh, they're all good songs. I mean, yeah. And I've, I've heard a few. I like Italy too because yeah. it's 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 sort of like a funk thing. Yeah. Um, but my favorite that I've been playing like 60, 65 times is um, this. Out of the embers, you and I gonna light up the room, which is Nate James Newman UK with the song Embers, and I hope they do really well. Oh, it's James Newman. Yes. <clears throat> Obviously the ride, it's my favorite. And when we uh, hear another effects of your cooperation. We will hear a new song with uh, Clara that uh, Yuan, me, TK and Clara has written. That's going to be, re be released in late April, in fact, in a couple of weeks. Joachim, Thomas, Johan, you are in the music industry for a couple of years, but you, Clara, you are a phenomenon among the Eurovision fans in Poland. Everybody knows who is Clara Rubashna. Uh, what was your first reaction for the news in media about yourself? Well, first of all, um, my demo was not supposed to be leaked. I don't know how it happened, but I mean, people seem to like it. It's not really a bad thing for me that people have heard it, people like it. But I was just as surprised when I saw comments uh, mentioning Clara Rupasna. That's awesome, that's so cool. I didn't know people get new names in Poland. Uh, but I was like, is it because of respect or they just can't pronounce my name <laughs> at first? But uh, that's so cool that people know who Clara Rupasna is. And if you like my voice, you like my demo, 
you should check out my other music. I have three songs on Spotify and more is coming out. So go check that out. All right, so I got a question here on YouTube in a comment from KH123 asking, what does Clara Robachna think about her fans from Poland? and whether she would like to take part in Eurovision as a singer in the future. Does she like the word Rubasna as a new survey? I think it's awesome. And thank you guys so much. Um, it's so cool that I have fans in Poland. Thank you. Of course, I would like to take part in Eurovision in the future. That would be a dream come true. Um, yeah. Alrighty then, I've got another question here on YouTube from Isafed. <laughs> so here's my question. How does it feel to do something this big? Are you nervous or scared? By the way, everybody who's reading this question, you one is my sensei and the biggest inspiration for me and my friends. Yeah, I know, you one is the man. Um, well, honestly, I haven't taken it in completely yet. Uh, it feels surreal. But I'm not nervous, I'm not scared, I'm just excited. But I think that if I would have been the one standing on stage, I definitely would have been nervous and stressed out right now. And excited, of course. Right now I'm just happy to be a songwriter. I'm able to relax and just uh, enjoy this moment. But of course it would be awesome to stand on, on the stage another time. Another question. What do you think of the Eurovision movie Fire Saga? It's so good. Oh my gosh. You have to watch it if you haven't. A Lion of Love is amazing. Oh my God. The lyrics, the performance, everything. His voice, just his character. I love Alexander Lemtov. Um, it was one of my most played songs last year. And we actually took inspiration uh, from him when we uh, made the ride, like the harmonies for the ride. So we were standing in the studio like, whoa! <laughs> there is actually a, a video of us doing that. Uh, it's on Yuan's phone though. But that was, that was a great time. Thank you so much guys for the interview. Uh, I wish you the best of luck and of course, We'll fingers crossed for Derek. But we want to say thank you to everyone at Eurovision.org, everyone who's part of OGAE Poland for supporting us and all the interest in the song yeah. and in Clara Rubashina. So thank you. Yeah.